I'm Dave from Notable, and today let's learn about how to use Notable's ChatGPT plugin to query a Microsoft SQL database. Let's get started. All right, so first thing we need to do is connect Notable to our Microsoft SQL database. So we can do that within Notable. Easiest place to do that is within the notebook page. So here's just a blank notebook. It's my first notebook. I actually created a whole new project for this effort. Over on the left in the database icon, this is where we manage our data connections. You can see here, I already have two data connections set up, one for a BigQuery database and one for a Postgres one, but I wanna add a new one. So let's get add data connection. Now, this video will give an overview of a MS SQL database, but all the steps that I take here include the steps right here and an add a database will be the same across any database type you use. So if you have a different one, you can still follow along and you'll still get a lot out of this video, hopefully. All right, so we'll go there. I will call this my MS SQL demo database. And now I have to add in the details here. So let me just host name. I know the port. I know my username here. I know my password here. There we go. And the database is called development. There we go. When you set up a data connection, you can have a private data connection or a space level data connection. A private one will follow you around wherever you are within Notable, regardless of what space you're in, and only you'll have access to it. A space level data connection is then shared within the space. So if you're collaborating across a team and you wanna set up a data connection that your entire team can use, you can create a space and then create a space level data connection. As you add other users to that space, they'll have access to that same data connection. So I wanna make this a space level one that goes within this Notable overview space which is exactly where that notebook and that project you just created were living in. So I'm going to go ahead and hit create here. All right, so now it's saved that connection. You see it's over on the left there. Now it's available for me to use within ChatGPT. So let's get started, right? Now, using Notable ChatGPT plugin, right? You have currently, you have to be a, a ChatGPT Plus subscriber, use the GPT-4 model and use the beta plugin feature. You can enable uh, the plugin feature uh, within the settings page of your account. And if you haven't installed the Notable plugin yet, you just go to the plugin store. Notable is one of the popular plugins you should see on the first page. If you don't, just search for it and go ahead and click install. Now, I already have it installed, so I'm not gonna go through those steps, uh, but we have more docs to describe that on our docs page if you wanna follow along there. All right, and so now I'll say, I want to create a notebook to query data within my MS SQL demo data connection talk and type at the same time, but you get the point there, All right? And so now it's going to use the plugin within Notable to start along on this effort. So you can see here, if you've never used plugins before, when you see the little green kind of bar there, that little square, uh, that means an action is happening between ChatGPT and Notable. And when it turns gray and it says use Notable, it means it's finished doing that. If you ever want, if you ever want to, you can inspect, right? What gets sent and go, what gets returned there. But otherwise, it's just best to kind of, you know, watch those little, um, you know, bars that progress along the way and then see the output that uh, ChatGPT types back to you here. So it said, I created a new notebook for you. You can access it here. Now let's work in this notebook. I need to fetch available data sources. Let's do that. I found your data connection. Great. We just let me just add it. Let's create a SQL cell to use this. All right. Another thing is I want to kind of add here and just, I just do this in general, right? To kind of help make sense of the notebooks that ChatGPT writes. I just give a little prompt that says, you know, when writing in this notebook, always use markdown cells to provide explanation of these code cells so I can better understand what you're doing. So I'll give it that prompt to get started there. All right, perfect. And it's gonna go ahead and just, um, you know, get, um, add a little explanation in there to that notebook. Now I can follow along, right? Remember it gave me the link before, so I can open the link and we can view that notebook you can see here, right, it just created the first cell to test um, what the data connection was, and now it's writing Markdown in there um, and the one down below, right? And so now I can start asking questions of data contained in that database. Now, I know there's a sharks table in there that I want to query. Um, this data just has information about a bunch of geotagged sharks as they're swimming about in the ocean and just makes for a fun uh, demo uh, to play around with here. So one of the first questions I, I might want to do is say, I want, uh, sorry, I am interested in data contained in the sharks table. How many unique species of sharks are in the table and what are they, right? So let's go ahead and send that over. And a really powerful thing here about the plugin is that ChatGPT is gonna help generate content for that notebook, uh, both the markdown cells as I previously asked it to do, as well as the actual code cells and the SQL cells in order to return the results for me. So. 
I can be uh, interfacing with a notebook and interfacing with my database using the natural language capabilities and power of ChatGPT. And again, when you're executing things in notebooks here, uh, you might see kind of, you know, multiple of these, um, you know, green sections as it makes its progress and makes its way uh, through the notebook. And that's totally normal here. In this case, it only took two and it did the, res did the exact query that I wanted it to do for me and it found the results. And usually it's always going to also say, I can view the results in the notebook. It'll give me a link to view that here. And I already have that open in a different tab. So I can go ahead and look at the results there. There's the query, there's the results. But again, it returned a summary of the results to ChatGPT, which is really helpful. So now I know uh, how many unique shark types are contained in that database, right? What if I want to find, right, what species of shark had the most individual tags, right, within that, within that table? And again, we're going to see it uh, interface with Notable, right? In those little sections here, it's going to go out, it's going to create those cells, it's going to execute the cells, use the data connection that we had already set up and return the results back. And again, any point you can uh, examine, right? What gets sent to Notable, what gets returned from Notable. Um, but usually if you're just patient and wait for the, the um, cells here to finish, uh, you'll get the results back right within the prompt here. So this is interesting to see too, right? This uh, we will often see as well, where ChatGPT will make a mistake, right? In some of the syntax that it uses. In this case here, it's saying that the original syntax it used wasn't compatible with the MS SQL server that I'm using, uh, but it can correct itself, which is really powerful, right? So it, it generated an error. It saw the results of that error and was able to correct um, in the second attempt here. So let's see if the second attempt works. There we go. Right. Again, it's given me the answer back to the question that I asked, but it's also given me a link to the notebook. I have the notebook over here, right? So I can see the results um, in the notebook it itself, right? And just so you know, in the notebook, it's using SQL cells connecting to that data connection to do the SQL, right? Let's just do two more quick examples of some more advanced type queries I can ask of it, right? So one of the ones here is, all right, of all these sharks and they're individually named sharks, Right, which has the biggest geographic box that is, you know, from the largest distance from the min uh, lat long location to the max lat long location, right? I can just, explain, you know, tell ChatGPT the question I wanted to ask. It will then translate that into the code in the SQL cell that it wants to run within the notebook, and it will give me the results back, which is really powerful. And there we go, right? So a particular shark named Catherine has the largest geographic box. I can view uh, the results with a notable. It's also gonna add a markdown cell that explains those results to help me kind of, again, better contextualize uh, what that SQL code was doing. Let's ask one last one. Let's make something a little more complicated because one of the really neat things about notable is that any SQL cell query that you do returns the results as a pandas data frame. And then you can then take that pandas data frame and do Pythonic things on it later, right? So in this case here, I want to create a map uh, that plots out all the locations of a particular shark. And I want to use as a Python library called Folium, which is great for interactive maps. And I want to use that Python library to create the result. So I'm going to tell it to use Folium to plot the first ping, the last ping, and a line connecting each pings for a particular tiger shark is named Emma. I want to make the icon of the first ping be a play icon, the icon of the last ping be a stop icon. And I'm telling ChatGPT here, do the SQL query first, right? Which returns results of Pandas data frame and then create the map based on that pandas data frame. And then lastly, just send me a link to view the results with a notable because it's gonna be better to view the interactive root, um, map with a notable than it is with um, just returning the text back to chat GPT. All right, so it's got intermediate results here. It's telling us that the SQL cell has fetched all the data for that shark named Emma it's now contained in a pandas data frame called Emma data. And now it's going to create a Python cell in that notebook to create the map visualization for me with the, with the exact specifications that I said before, the play icon, the stop icon, and the line between all the points. And there we go. It's finished doing that. It's going to give me a link here in a second to view that result. Again, I have it open on another tab here, so I don't have to click the link. Let's go down to the bottom of the notebook here. Right, here's the query where it gets all the information about Emma. Here's the Python code to create the Folium map. And here's that interactive Folium map, all of inside Notable. Super powerful, right? Just using natural language to express what I want, either in SQL or in Python, and have ChatGPT create it for me, giving me the notebook at the end of the day, right, that I can now share out with others using the search feature here. 
I can publish this into a published artifact that I can share with others. And when you publish something in Notable, you can say only display these elements and don't display other elements because maybe I want to hide the code and just display the results and the markdown sections of the notebook. I can fully do that in here as well. Anytime we return a data frame within Notable, either from Python or from a results of a SQL query, we have our own rich no code data visualization uh, capability inside Notable here. So I can just here, I can look at the table, the data here, you can go, I can filter down through it. I can brush filters on it easily. I can rename the columns, sort the columns, hide columns, etc. This only has three columns, so it's not terribly interesting on that front, but I can create a visualization super easily, right? So I can sit, create new visualization, it can be my own guide. There's over 40 different visualization types that Notable supports, including a tile map view. So I know before I had asked uh, uh, ChatGPT to create a folio map for me. It, you know, it needed a little bit of Python code to do that. But even as a no code user within the notebook here, I can go on and even create visualizations um, out of my data just by clicking around with some of the options that we provide with our data explorer called Dex. All right, so I hope that was helpful. And I hope this really helped you get started with how to use data connections with a Notable and query a Microsoft SQL Server. Again, everything that I demoed today uh, would be just the same if you use any other database type. So you want to use uh, Snowflake or a BigQuery or et cetera, it all would work the same way. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Uh, we have a community forum at community.notable.io or reach out to our support team at support.notable.io. Hope this helps and good luck. Thanks.